Hey guys, welcome back to the Path to Medicine. Uh, for this video, I wanted to try something new. Um, I will continue doing the high yield images videos, but I also wanted to try doing high yield concepts uh, to cover a lot of different things aside from just pictures. So this is going to be the first video uh, where I'm gonna try that. I apologize in advance if it's not that great. I'm um, still trying to figure out exactly how I wanna format it, but if you guys enjoy this video and enjoy the format and the way that this is set up, then uh, this is definitely something I'll continue to do in the future. So please comment and let me know what you think uh, at the end of the video. So for this first video, uh, what I want to cover is some adrenal hormone synthesis uh, as well as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And that really all starts with this pitch right here. This is extremely high yield, which is, of course, why I picked it. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of the basics, probably stuff everybody already knows, and then kind of get into the more details and some of the higher yield points. So... The first thing that I want to talk about is, of course, the three hormones that we have here, which are going to be aldosterone, uh, cortisol, and androstenedione, DHEA, uh, so mainly your, your sex steroid hormones. So these are the main hormones that are going to be produced in the uh, adrenal cortex. Really important to know that. Remember that these are produced in the cortex. Uh, different hormones are produced in the adrenal medulla. Of course, those are the catecholamines, and those are produced by what type of cells? Chromaffin cells. So chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla are going to produce our catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, different cells in the adrenal cortex are going to produce these hormones, aldosterone, cortisol, and our sex steroids. Uh, and it's really important to know that all of these hormones, the, the main uh, compound that they come or are derived from is cholesterol. So cholesterol is kind of the starting point for this entire process. That's probably not a question that you're going to get asked, but it is important to know that. So as, as you see here, these are three different pathways. Um, and it's also very high yield to know where exactly in the adrenal cortex these are coming from. It's not good enough to know just adrenal cortex. You need to know exactly where they're coming from. And there's a couple different ways that people remember this. Uh, there's three layers to the adrenal cortex, uh, and people remember that with the mnemonic GFR, similar to glomerular filtration rate. So you're dealing with GFR in the kidneys, of course, and another way to remember it is with GFR in the adrenal um, cortex. Uh, so you're going to have the three zones, and it goes like this. So this is going to be the G, this is going to be the R, and this is going to be the F. So the G stands for zona glomerulosa. And that's the outermost layer, and that's where the aldosterone is produced. The F stands for zona uh, fasciculata, which is where the cortisol is produced. And then the R stands for zona uh, reticularis, which is where the sex steroids are produced. So remember GFR, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. And another way that people like to remember this that I've seen is uh, sweat sugar sex. The deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. I, I don't know who came up with that, but it's a good way to remember it as well. So sweat, obviously aldosterone is going to be working to increase your blood pressure. So I guess that makes you start sweating. Uh, sugar, cortisol promotes release of uh, glucose. So that's the sugar. And then sex, obviously for sex steroids. So GFR, uh, sweat, sugar, sex, the deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. Whatever you want to do, very high yield to remember the different layers, what's produced there. Uh, if you guys want, I can do perhaps in another video, um, explain the histology of the different layers because it is also very important to be able to identify them on histology. They will give you a picture, point to a layer, and ask what's produced here, or where is this certain hormone produced, which of these layers. So it is important to know that on histology as well. So moving on, like I was saying, there are the three pathways for the um, hormones that are going to be produced. So we're going to break each of those down and then talk about uh, what happens that causes the congenital adrenal hyperplasia. But the first thing that I think is really important to know is um, the this first step here of cholesterol being converted to pregnenolone. Uh, this isn't covered a lot, but it is something that I have seen test questions on. So I think it is important to know. That's why I want to cover it. So the conversion of cholesterol to pre pregnenolone um, is carried out by the hormone cholesterol desmolase, also called just desmolase, but it's important to know that cholesterol desmolase converts cholesterol to pregnenolone, and that is the rate-limiting step of this entire process. Desmolase 
catalyzes the rate limiting step and the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone. And then of course, pregnenolone is going to be the secondary precursor, if you will, for all the other hormones that we're talking about. So I think it is important to know uh, decimalase. Um, and then going along with that, uh, one hormone that activates decimalase is going to be ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone. The reason being that it wants to produce cortisol down here, so it needs to start the pathway up here by activating desmolase. Uh, something that inhibits desmolase, not commonly talked about, but it is also something that you would want to note, is going to be ketoconazole. Uh, so ketoconazole will inhibit desmolase. So I know that this is a really complicated pathway with a lot of intermediates. We don't really need to know them all, and we don't need to know all the hormones. The main ones are going to be 21-hydroxylase, uh, 11 beta hydroxylase and 17 alpha hydroxylase. So those are the main three, and those are the ones that I'm going to cover. So congenital adrenal hyperplasia. If we just break down the name congenital, it's something that you're born with, that you have at birth. Adrenal, so it's dealing with the adrenal glands. Hyperplasia, so we know it's an increase in number, not an increase in size, it's an increase in number of the cells. And the reason being, because we have an enzyme deficiency and we're having underproduction of, of one of these hormones, the adrenal glands are going to respond by increasing the number of cells with the hope of increasing the amount of hormone that's being produced. So that's just an overview of the condition itself. Uh, and I'm going to start first with 21-hydroxylase because that is the most common cause of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, 95% uh, of cases. And, and it's very, very high yield to know this enzyme, to know the aberrant effects that it has. So let's just start with that. So we see here that 21-hydroxylase is involved in the production of aldosterone as well as the production of cortisol. So if we knock out 21-hydroxylase, this whole pathway is going to stop right here. We're not going to get any cortisol, and we're not going to get any aldosterone. We're not even going to get any of these intermediates up here. The whole pathway is stopping up here. So as a result of a deficiency in 21-hydroxylase, we're going to have decreased mineralocorticoids, we're going to have decreased cortisol, and now all of this pregnenolone up here that was going to enter this pathway is going to be shunted over here, and it's going to overproduce the sex steroids. Very important to know that. So um, how is this going to present? Uh, well, infants are going to have salt wasting, obviously because they have low aldosterone, uh, and they might also have precocious puberty. Why? because they're having so much overproduction of these sex steroids right here is going to lead to the precocious puberty. Um, another really important thing to note is that with this 21-hydroxylase deficiency, you are going to see increased renin activity. And that should kind of make sense because if you're not having any aldosterone being produced, you're going to want to produce renin, the kidneys are, that is, uh, to, to, with the hopes of activating the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system to hopefully produce aldosterone. So 21-hydroxylase deficiency, you will see an increased renin activity. And remember, this is the most common deficiency when dealing with this pathway. Um, the next one I want to cover is going to be a 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency. It doesn't say it here, but by the way, it is 17-alpha-hydroxylase. I'll squeeze that in. Um, so in this case, if we break it down, what's going to happen is that we're going to have as a result of this deficiency, we're going to have decreased sex steroids and we're also going to have decreased cortisol. So what's the result of that? Well, obviously decreased sex steroids, decreased cortisol, that's the one thing. But now all of this pregnenolone here is going to be shunted down this pathway to aldosterone. So there's going to be an overproduction of mineralocorticoids. What does that mean? Patient's going to have high blood pressure. Also, because you're having aldosterone produced, remember aldosterone reabsorbs sodium. That's how you're getting the high blood pressure. And it excretes potassium. So the patient is going to have low potassium. Uh, some other important things about this. In an infant, in a male, you'll see ambiguous genitalia and you'll see undescended testes. Why is that? That's because you have no sex steroids here promoting the descent of the testes and promoting uh, differentiation of the genitalia into male genitalia. Uh, in a female, you're going to see a, a lack of secondary sex characteristics. So, you know, they might not have well-developed breasts, they might not have the normal distribution of body hair, 
because these sex steroids do play a role in, in those things in a female. So again, just to review, if we have a decrease in 17 alpha hydroxylase, no cortisol, no sex steroids, a lot of aldosterone, hypertension, hypokalemia. Very important to know that. Okay. Now, the last one here that we need to deal with is going to be 11 beta hydroxylase right here. So this is uh, a little bit rarer, but because of that, it's, it's more high yield. And the reason is because of the physiology of what's happening here. So it is important to know this one as well. So if we look here, 11 beta hydroxylase, if we knock that out, we're not going to have production of cortisol, right? Because this entire pathway stopped here, but we are going to have production of this guy, deoxycorticosterone. The reason this is so important is because this hormone, deoxycorticosterone, does have mineralocorticoid activity. So it's not a strong mineralocorticoid, but you will still have increased mineralocorticoids. Important to note, you're going to have low aldosterone, right? Because the pathway stopped right here. So nothing below this red line is produced, but the patient will still have um, increased blood pressure because of the mineralocorticoid activity of this hormone right here. Very, very high yield to know that. So what are the, some of the effects that we're going to see here? Obviously, I just said we're going to have decreased cortisol. We're going to have decreased aldosterone with that increased blood pressure. And we're also going to have decreased potassium. Again, because of the mineralocorticoid activity up here, it's going to promote sodium reabsorption, potassium excretion. You're going to get low serum potassium. Um, one important thing to note with that is that you're going to have decreased renin activity. Very important. Decreased renin activity. Now, remember what I just said a couple minutes ago. If you have a um, 21 hydroxylase deficiency, you're going to have increased renin activity, right? Because nothing here was being produced. No mineralocorticoids, nothing even close to aldosterone was being produced. But now that you have an 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, this guy is enough to tell the body, okay, well, we have some kind of aldosterone thing being produced. So we don't need to up the renin because we are able to kind of regulate the blood pressure. So let me say that again, because it's really confusing, but it's also very high yield. 21 hydroxylase deficiency, you're going to have increased renin activity. 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, you're going to have decreased renin activity. Okay, so I hope that was clear. If you have any questions about it, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, the only other things that I want to say about this, about this congenital adrenal hyperplasia, uh, all of these conditions, whether we're talking about 21 hydroxylase, 17 alpha hydroxylase, or 11 beta hydroxylase, are going to be characterized by enlargement of both adrenal glands. And we already kind of touched on that in the beginning, right? The hyperplasia, the adrenal glands are trying to make more cells to make more of the deficient hormones. And the reason for that is going to be increased ACTH. So I said earlier, ACTH activates this hormone here. What hormone was this? Desmolase. Remember, desmolase catalyzes co conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone. So ACTH is going to be activating that, trying to produce some of these hormones. And as a result, the, the adrenal glands are going to respond by increasing the number of cells, hyperplasia. Uh, one other important thing to note about that is because you're having increased ACTH, the patient can present with skin hyperpigmentation really high yield. Increased ACTH is associated with increased skin hyperpigmentation. The reason being is that ACTH, I believe, uh, has a very similar uh, structural property to melanocyte stimulating hormone. So it does have that type of effect as well. So really know that. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. Know the different enzyme deficiencies, really these main three here. Don't worry too much about any of the other intermediates or any of the other intermediary enzymes. Know what will be low, know what will be overproduced, and how that will present the patient. Will it be low blood pressure? Will it be low potassium? Will it be virilization? All those different things, very high yield to know. Uh, so uh, that's about it. I hope you like this video. Please, please, please leave me, leave me comments. 
to let me know how I'm doing if you guys like this kind of thing. So I'll continue doing it in the future. And again, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, thus far, guys, share these videos with your friends so we can you know, share the knowledge. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys.